Hi and welcome to this video, my name is Michael Wild, and we're going to be going through setting up ID maps for Substance inside of Maya today. Um, it's a really great workflow to work with, it basically means that you can take the material data from Maya and in Substance you can assign materials from that. Uh, it just means you can set up things quite quickly and it means if you've ever got any model updates or anything like that, it's quite quick to iterate on those. So as you can see in Maya here, I've got this camera object I modeled a while ago. Um, I've started assigning some Lambert shaders just to different bits. So the red is going to be maybe a metal, the green a darker metal, uh, white plastic, blue glass. So I have set those up and I'm going to set up a new one now just to show you how that works. So this chord, let's say for example I want this to be a different color plastic. So I'm going to right click this and I'm just going to go to si assign new material. I'm going to set that to a Lambert shader. Um, you can use any, but all you need is the color data. That's all Substance is going to read. So I've got this Lambert here. I'm going to double click that and just change um, the color to a bright purple. Cool. So when you're doing this, you just need to make sure that all the colors are quite different from each other. If I were to have an, a red, I wouldn't want this to be another close red. The way that Substance does it is it samples the color for the materials and assigns based on that. So you don't want it to accidentally assign the wrong material. Um, yeah, use a lot of different colors. So red, green, blue, and then I went for white. I've gone for a magenta, I'd probably use a black next, something like that, just to keep them all quite different. So that's ready to go now. So we can export that now. Um, Substance uses FBX for this method. You can't use OBJ, so that's really important to be aware of. Um, as you can see, this was an OBJ that I had from a while ago. I've just split this up and I've renamed it underscore geo. That's gonna become important later. Um, and I'll explain why then. So I'm just gonna select everything and go file, export selection. I'm gonna export this in FBX. If you're having any issues with this, then the only option you need to change on the FBX potentially is if you go all the way down to FBX file format, I'm using FBX 2018, but sometimes I know FBX different years have got different weirdness to them sometimes. So it might be worth trying 2014 or 2015 if this isn't working for you. So I'm just gonna call this camera ID for now because that's what I'm using it for. I'm gonna export that and that's good to go. So I'm gonna hop over to Substance Painter and I'm gonna to go to File, New. Um, I'm gonna create a texture set per UDIM because I've got multiple UDIMs for this asset and I'm just gonna select that mesh. Perfect, so if I hit okay on that, so we've got this now. So all I need to do is I need to bake that color data into my ID map. So if I go over to Texture Set Settings, I'm gonna to go to Bake Mesh Maps. Uh, I don't want to do anything but the ID, so I'm just going to turn all the others off and I'm going to select ID. So if I just do that now with the default settings, which are vertex, color, and hue shift, let's see what that does for me. I've left everything as it is. So if I go bake or I'll edit this out in case it takes a while. So when that's done, I'm going to click material up here and I'm going to change to my ID just to view the ID map. So that's black by default. So not great, not what we're after. So I'm going to try this again. But instead of vertex color, what I want to use is material color because I'm pumping in some material color from my FBX file format. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to make sure because I'm using texture sets, I'm going to apply to all to make sure that setting does it on all of them. And then I'm just going to bake that again. Great, so already we can see that we've got something here. On first look, it might look like it's worked out perfectly, but it in fact hasn't. So as you can see, this chord that I changed to purple is red. And what Substance likes to do, not entirely sure why, it likes to apply the same color to the different UDIMs. So if I scroll through my texture sets here, the UDIMs, you can see that it's applying the same color to every single bit. It's not actually looking at the individual pieces of geometry. So how do I fix that? Quite simple. I was trying to work this out for ages and I finally sorted it. So if we head up to our common properties, I'm gonna click on ID again, but I'm gonna scroll up to the, sorry, the common parameters. So you can see here, we've got these mesh options. We can use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. And there's also these other ones, high poly mesh suffix and so on and so forth. But what we're looking for is we're looking for this match option. So I'm gonna change this match option to by mesh name. So what Substance is gonna do here is it's gonna take a look for, the, for a high poly and a low poly version. And it's gonna look at each one, look at the mesh names from the FBX file format and then assign the colors based on objects that match the same names. So this is the only way that I found to fix it. So yeah, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna just use my low poly mesh as high poly mesh for now. And do you remember how they were called underscore geo? So I'm gonna change the suffix because they're both underscore geo. The low poly and the high poly because I'm telling it to use the low poly as both. And then we're gonna try baking that again and see if this works. So unfortunately, this has given me the same results. It hasn't put this purple in. What we can do is, if you've been having the same issue, then I can show you how to fix that. So if we hop back over to Maya, 
what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give Substance a high poly version. I'm going to keep it exactly the same, but I'm going to change the um, name on these. So I'm going to call it underscore, instead of geo, I'm going to call it something else. So I'm going to select all these. I've got this renaming script that I found online. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. And so I'm going to change from underscore geo to just something like underscore HP. So for high poly, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to export exactly the same thing again, but just as a different name this time. Export that. And then back in substance, when I go to bake, instead of using the low poly mesh as high poly this time, I am going to select this new high poly one that I've made. So substance now tells me that I've got this high poly. You can see it's got this option box and high poly suffix instead of geo this time is underscore HP. So I'm going to bake that. Great. As you can see, this time we've got the purple on the cords. Everything else looks as it should be. So I'm just going to switch back to Maya and you can see uh, these two line up now, which is great because different objects have got different colors on the same UDIM. So why is this important? Why is this a handy workflow? So what I'm going to do is very quickly, I'm just going to drop down some materials and show why I think this is so powerful. So I'm going to switch back to my material view. So let's just pop down a kind of silvery metal uh, and let's, for the sake of this, do a plastic as well. So I'm going to instance those across all the different texture sets. So it's across the whole mesh on both of them. Cool. So now we've got the plastic on both areas. So what I can do is I can now this plastic, say, for example, I wanted this to be just one of the colors from my ID map. I can right click this and go add mask with color selection. So now I've got this mask in it and it's got this new thing here. So if I go pick color on this ID mask selection, I can choose, say for example, I wanted it to only be on the red. So I can choose that. And now this object has procedurally with this setup from Maya, it's telling it that any bit from Maya that is red will have this plastic assigned to it. So I can do another one. So for example, I wanted this, let's have a look. Let's say I wanted something to be wooden. I can pop that down and do exactly the same color select. I'm going to make the green be wooden. This is going to be a really horrible texture, but then I'm just going to instantiate that again. And perfect. Now I've got all these different materials and I've done very, very little work. So obviously the materials aren't great. I would have to do a lot more setup to get something that's nice. But say, for example, I had model changes, then all I need to do is go back into Maya, load the new model in, um, and it doesn't matter if the UVs or anything like that have switched because I can just reassign these Lamberts to different things. And then inside of Substance, I just rebake that ID map and it will change it all on the fly for me. So this is a workflow that I've used on multiple films now. Um, it saves so much time and I cannot, I cannot rave enough about it, especially when it comes to hard surface things rather than if I was using another painting software, say for example in Mari, then I would have to hand paint all that or change the masks by hand, whereas this just lets you do things a lot more procedurally. So if you've got any questions on that, please leave them below. I'm going to be doing some more tutorials soon, hopefully. So anything that you want to see, let me know in the comment section below or subscribe for those. Um, yeah, best of luck texturing and have a great day. Cheers.